Welcome to today's episode of Virus Versus. We're glad to have you. Today we're going to be looking at microcytic anemias. So sit tight. On today's episode of Virus Versus, we are looking at Heme's Iron Mine. Bringing us into the mine, we have an elevator coming out of the bowels of the earth. This elevator should remind you of ferroportin, the transport protein for iron, which brings iron out of your bowels and into your blood. From there, we find the iron in the blood, and that iron is represented as the iron on a pallet. Now remember, as we go forward in the sketch, this will represent high serum iron when there is iron present, and low serum iron when you have an empty pallet. Next to the pallet, we see the molecule that transports iron in our blood. Transferrin. This is represented by the minecart. Whenever you see a minecart, I want you to think transferrin. Iron obviously isn't just kept lying around the mine or in the minecarts. Instead, the miners here store it in crates. These are ferritin crates. Remember, iron is stored in ferritin crates. This mine is a little unusual though. This mine has a special capacity, and that is there have to be less than 80 workers at any time. This is to remind you that the MCV of microcytic anemia is less than 80. So if you see less than 80, you have a microcytic anemia. To further represent that this is microcytic anemia, our mine is manned by dwarves. These dwarves are dressed in special mining uniforms. This includes a red beret hat shaped like a red blood cell to remind us that we're talking about small red blood cells. Our dwarf has blue sclera and blue nail beds to show us the bluing that occurs around the eyes and the nails. Do you know what other conditions involve bluing sclera? Well, it's okay, you don't need to know it right now, but osteogenesis imperfecta is one common cause. Other symptoms of microcytic anemia are also depicted here. We notice that our dwarf is carrying a canary. Unfortunately, that canary doesn't look very well. He's lying on his back, which lets us know our canary is dead. Now what is it the canary is to die from it? Well, that's right, lack of oxygen. This is to show us that in microcytic anemia, another common symptom is difficulty breathing. We also notice that our dwarf miner is wearing some white platform shoes. Well, whenever you think of these white platform shoes, I want you to remember pale pallor. That's right, pale platform shoes is pale pallor, because that is one of the most common findings of anemias. So pale skin for pale platform shoes. Beside our minor dwarf, we see another minor dwarf laying down, taking a snooze on the job. This is to remind us of fatigue that often plagues anemia patients. Okay, with the symptoms out of the way, let's go ahead and move into some basic causes of microcytic anemia. We'll be covering three major types that thalassemias we're leaving for another video. You see up there in the cave just to the north? There is a dwarven miner scratching his head, confused. What's going on? His palate is empty. There is no iron on it. That's right, this is iron deficient anemia. Iron deficient anemia causes microcytic anemia, though we should note one of the early stages is a normocytic anemia. There are multiple causes of iron deficiency anemia, including breastfeeding and malnutrition. What's that sitting on the palate? That's right, it's a pharaoh's headdress. This pharaoh's headdress should remind you that iron deficiency anemia has an effect due to the impact of a lack of iron on the enzyme ferrochelatase. Ferrochelatase, we should remember, is the last step in heme synthesis. Without iron, ferrochelatase is unable to act. So remember, Pharaoh's headdress should remind us ferrochelatase is unable to act in iron deficiency anemia. In iron deficiency anemia, we have low levels of ferritin, represented by the lack of ferritin crates in front it looks like, despite that he doesn't have any iron, he does have minecarts. That's right, he has two transferrin minecarts. This is to remind us that in iron deficiency anemia, we have higher levels of transferrin in response to decreased serum iron. So, the two findings we should remember. Decreased serum iron, just as with the empty iron pallet in front of our friendly dwarf, and increased transferrin, represented by the minecarts he possesses. Hey, what's that commotion going down in the left? Well, that's just our other dwarf miner friend. Looks like he has a cold. What's that you say? Could he be anemia of chronic disease? Well, yes indeed. 
Remember, our sick dwarf friend here represents anemia of chronic disease. Anemia of chronic disease occurs after a long period of sickness, during which your body starts to sequester iron. Hey, wait a minute. It's not just our dwarf friend. What's that? That must be a mine invader. That mine invader should remind us of our body's pathogens whenever we get sick. Notice how he has an iron bar that he's consumed off of the pallet. If we look right up above him, the pallet's empty. This is because bacterial pathogens and other pathogens seek out the body's stores of iron. Our body responds by decreasing the available iron so the pathogen can't continue to reproduce. This results in low serum iron levels, once again represented by a pallet without iron present. Now back there is just our ferritin crates. Remember that ferritin is our storage molecule. The iron off the pallet wasn't all just eaten. Instead, our sickly dwarf friend smartly put them in the boxes where our mine invader couldn't take them. That's right, in anemia of chronic disease, we expect to see increased ferritin levels in response to the increased need for storage. Oh no, it seems that we're not done with surprises in the mine. Look over there. What's that? Is it a giant cave spider? And what's that it's got on its back? It looks like a ringed pattern. This ringed pattern spider should remind us of ringed sideroblasts seen in sideroblastic anemia, our third type of microcytic anemia. And look at this. This ringed spider has found a young dwarf lad and a young dwarf lass. These two should represent in your mind the two enzymes affected in sideroblastic anemia. The most common cause is a lad, our young dwarf lad over there who hasn't yet fully grown his whiskers. The second enzyme is a lass, represented by our young dwarf lass. We'll focus first on a lad. A lad stands for amino levulinic acid dehydratase. It's easier here to remember him as a dwarf lad. This enzyme is responsible for converting amino levulinic acid to porphobilinogen. This is a necessary step in heme synthesis. It looks like our dwarf lad's going to fight the ringed spider. What's that he's got? A lead pipe? This lead pipe should remind you that one cause of sideroblastic anemia with effect on a lad is lead poisoning. Do you notice how he's holding the lead pipe across his abdomen? This is to remind us of abdominal colic, which we see in lead poisoning. Look there behind him. What's that up on the wall? Well, it looks like a tapestry. A tapestry of a stapler and basil leaves. Well, this basil leaf stapler tapestry should remind us of the basophilic stippling we see in microcytic anemia caused by lead poisoning. Look there on the tapestry. We've even included a small representation of the types of cells you should expect to see on a smear. There's another enzyme that lead poisoning can also affect. Can you guess what it is? That's right. Lead poisoning also inhibits ferrochelatase. So we'll leave a pharaoh's headdress right there near our dwarf lad. Now let's return our attention to the young dwarf lass we left waiting over there. Our young dwarven lass should remind us of the enzyme ALAS, or amino levulinic acid synthase. ALAS is the rate limiting enzyme for heme synthesis. Take a look. What's that behind her? It looks like some abandoned mine shaft. ALAS deficiency can occur in vitamin B6 deficiency, represented by the B6 shaft that she's looking back towards. Other causes can be genetic. In sideroblastic anemia, caused both by ALAD and ALAS deficiencies, we can see some common characteristics. First, we see high serum iron, represented by the full iron palette. And look over there. That's a lot of ferritin crates in front of the abandoned mine shaft. Well, that should remind us that there are also high levels of ferritin. And don't forget about the ringed spider sideroblast, which tells us that this is a microcytic anemia. Remember, when we hear about ringed sideroblast, we should be thinking ALAS or ALAD, and we should be thinking about lead poisoning, vitamin B6 deficiency, genetics, and alcoholism. Hey, look, what's that up there? I think we figured out why the ringed spider sideroblast was being so protective of the mine shaft. You see that? It looks like three egg sacs. With this, we'll make one final note about microcytic anemia as a whole. You know what those egg sacs look like to me? That's right, they look like reticulocytes. So let these three egg sacs remind you 
that in microcytic anemia, the reticulocyte count is expected to be less than 3%. Okay, so let's review. Here in the heme iron mine, we see microcytic anemia. Microcytic anemias occur at less than 80 mcv. We expect the symptoms to be bluing of the nail beds and sclera, pale pallor, fatigue, and shortness of breath. The things that can lead to a microcytic anemia are as follows. Iron deficiency interferes with ferrochelatase, inhibiting heme synthesis. In iron deficiency, we see low serum iron, low ferritin, and high transferrin molecules. Anemia of chronic disease occurs when we have prolonged sickness. To protect our body's iron stores from invaders, we decrease serum iron concentrations by increasing levels of ferritin and storing the iron in the ferritin in macrophages. Finally, in sideroblastic anemia, one of two enzymes can be deficient, ALAS or ALAD. ALAD deficiency can be caused by lead poisoning, which leads to basophilic stippling of the erythrocytes. ALAS can be disrupted by vitamin B6 deficiency. In sideroblastic anemia, we see the presence of ringed sideroblasts, high serum iron concentrations, and high ferritin levels. Okay, that's it. I hope this helped you. Have a good one, and see you next time here on Virus Versus.